Director of Children's Ministry at Wayne United Methodist Church. That's my dog, Sonny. And we are here to welcome you to another Children's Online Worship, or COW, as we like to call it. So, we are in the middle of the season of Lent, L-E-N-T. We are counting down to Easter. I've even got my purple hair for Lent because the color for Lent is purple. And we have purple in our churches during Lent and during Advent, right before Christmas, because it is a symbol of royalty. And we know that Jesus is our king. And it is a way to show respect to Jesus by remembering his royal nature, even though he was very humble. He didn't act all fancy and royal when he was here on earth. Now, we are hearing about some of the stories that Jesus told others and some of the miracles that Jesus performed his last three years here on earth before he died. So, we're going to hear another one of those stories today about a little girl who was the daughter of a man named Jairus. 
So go ahead, watch the Journey Today show episode, see what you think, and then I will see you at the end, and hopefully my dog Sunny will stop eating by that time, because if you hear something crunching in the background, it is Sunny. I will see you at the end. Hey, David. Um, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Casey. You're just in time to witness my amazing power. Would you believe that with just one small command, I can raise this ping pong ball up in the air without touching it? Um, no, I wouldn't believe that. Well, prepare to be amazed. Ping pong ball, I say to you, Get up! Hmm, I don't think it heard you. Maybe you need to say it louder? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'll say it more loudly this time. Okay, here we go. Ping pong ball, I say to you, get up! Yeah, that was loud enough, but I think you need to say it with more gusto. Oh, yeah, yeah, more gusto. All right, here we go. Ping pong ball, I say to you, get off! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Journey Today Show. My name is Casey. And I'm David. David, what are you doing now? Well, I realize what the problem is. You see, the ping pong ball doesn't have ears to hear me, so I'm drawing the ears on. David, that's not the problem. It, it doesn't matter what you do. You are not going to raise that ping pong ball up with just a command. But do you know who can? A Jedi? No, no, they're, they're not real. But Jesus is real, and he can do it. In fact, he did it. Except when he did it, it wasn't just a ping pong ball, it was a girl. And she wasn't just lying on a table, she was dead. Whoa, you're telling me that Jesus made a dead girl float in the air? No, no, uh, uh, of course not. When Jesus raised her up, he brought her back to life. You know what, I think it'll make way more sense if we just read the story for ourselves. So here's what I want you to do. In just a second, press pause and open your Bible and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, we'll see you back here. Isn't that incredible? Jesus didn't just raise up an itty bitty ping pong ball. He raised up a girl from the dead. When Jesus got to the house, she was just lying there, completely still, no life in her. Just like that ping pong ball. But that was no big thing for Jesus. To him, it was like she was just taking a nap. Yeah, that's right. Jesus took the little girl by the hand and said, little girl, I say to you, get up. And just like that, the little girl rose from the dead. <laughs> Hey, we did it! You know what? This is just a little hair dryer, but it actually gives me an idea for a challenge. Okay, I'm curious. Do you think we could recreate this on a much bigger scale? Here's what I'm wondering. I have got a giant leaf blower here. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, Casey. We've got this giant leaf blower, and I'm just wondering, can we make different balls float with the leaf blower? So let's try it. Let's try first with the ping pong ball. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Here we go. 
Oh. Uh, yeah. A little too light. Yeah, I think that was way too light. So let's try uh, maybe the pickleball. The pickleball. Okay. Let's see if the pickleball works. Three, two, one. Whoa. <laughs> oh my goodness. Also that too was light. Like also a too light. Rocket. Yeah, that was way too light. How about? Yeah, let's go with a bigger ball, like a basketball. Okay, here we go. And. That was kind of cool. That actually floated just a little, a bit. little, a little bit, bit, but I'm wondering if maybe that's too heavy. What'll happen if we try a kickball? All right, here we go. Yeah! yeah! That is awesome. Oh my goodness. That was so much fun. And that was amazing, too. It was amazing. And, and if you think that a floating ball is amazing, imagine how the people in Jairus' house felt. They had just watched Jesus bring a dead girl back to life. That's right. And get this. That wasn't the only time Jesus raised someone from the dead. He raised two other people from the dead, too. Jesus even raised himself from the dead. And there was a whole bunch of times that he healed people from sickness. Yeah, Jesus can do that because he has power over sickness and death. When, when we or someone we know is sick, Jesus wants us to pray and have faith that he can heal us. You know, that reminds me of a time when I was at Six Flags with my daughter. Six Flags is like this amusement park that's right by our house. She was about six years old at the time and we had been riding rides all day long, roller coasters. And sometimes if I'm like twisting and turning so much, I start to feel so sick. And that's what had happened to me. And so we were sitting at dinner and I just felt terrible. I mean, I felt so sick to my stomach that I had put my head down on the table and just let my daughter eat while I was resting. And at one point during the meal, like she just sort of slipped away and went underneath the table, which was really kind of weird. And I didn't know what she was doing, but I was too sick to even ask her. And then after like 30 or 45 seconds, she popped back up, sat down and started eating. And now what's weird is that maybe just like three minutes later, I started to feel better. And that's weird because normally when I get motion sick like that, I feel sick all day long. But three minutes later, I'm feeling great. And I finish my meal and we get up and we go get in line for another ride. And while we're in line, my little six-year-old daughter says to me, Dad, do you know why I went underneath the table? And I was like, I have no idea why you did that. And she said, Dad, I went under the table and I prayed that you would feel better. It was amazing. God heard her prayer and it was just minutes later that I started to feel better. That is such an incredible story. So do you think that means that Jesus will heal everybody from their sickness? Ooh, that is a great question. Maybe not right away, maybe not even during this lifetime, but someday, whether it's here on earth or it's in heaven, everyone who has faith in Jesus will be healed. In fact, that's what our Bible verse talks about. Take a look at this. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Revelation 21.4. I love that verse because it gives me so much hope. And you know what? It makes me think of a question too. Do you know anyone who is sick, sad, or hurt? If so, how can you pray for them? Press pause and discuss. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had some great conversation. If you have faith in Jesus and follow him, when you die, he will raise you back to life in heaven. In heaven, Jesus will wipe away all of your tears. He will take away all of your sadness. He will heal you from all of your sickness. 
So if you're sick or if someone you know is sick, pray to Jesus with big faith and ask him for healing. That's right. But if you or the person who is sick doesn't get better right away, don't be discouraged. Jesus hears your prayer and he'll bring total healing in, in this life or in heaven. Amen. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Make sure you join us again next week for some more fun in the Bible. Yeah, we'll see you next week, everybody. Bye. Show them how it works. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> Welcome back. So, isn't that a remarkable story of the miracle of Jesus bringing the girl back to life? That's phenomenal. I'm sure that that was a remarkable thing for everybody involved at the time. Jesus performed lots of miracles during his time here on earth. And he made sure that he let folks know that he was the son of God. We call Jesus, one of the many names we call Jesus is King of Kings. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so during this season of Lent, we are hearing some of those stories that Jesus told and some of the miracles that he performed and some of the things that he did. So we're counting down to Easter, which is on March 31st. So it's going to be here before we know it. So let's go ahead and close our eyes for a quick word of prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you so much for all of the amazing things that Jesus did while he was here on earth with us. May we be able to stop and pay attention to you and to Jesus during this Lenten season. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So your challenge for this week is to see how many times you can stop and say thank you to God or to Jesus for all that you have. We often forget to do that during our busy, busy, busy lives or just when we're having fun or we're busy with doing schoolwork or whatever we're doing with sports and whatever. But see how many times you can stop and say thank you to God for all of the wonderful things that we have in our lives and especially for the amazing things that Jesus did for all of us as Christians. So I hope you'll come back and see me next week. It'll be another Sunday in the middle of Lent. And I hope that you have a good week until you come back. So until I see you next time, bye-bye.